today I want to show you this new transponder I just stuck in each of my planes. This is the NGT 9000. After a long and painful journey with ADS-B, starting back in about 2009, uh, I finally have come up with the box that's perfect for my uses. I started out with Navworks, and then last fall I went to the Echo UAT, and after uh, seeing how that works, I decided I wasn't going to sacrifice anymore. I was going to go all out, and I got the Lynx transponder. And man, is this a piece of work. It's all a touch screen system. You can enter your squat code by digits on a touch screen interface. Um, it has all the normal buttons that you'd normally use. But when you don't want to use it for traffic, you can slide everything off to the side and you still get your squat code up there. You can get quick access back to your transponder just with the touch of a button. But you can make it more useful for your normal uses. Now, there's a lot of different things that this box does that uh, aren't immediately obvious unless you play with it for a little while. Now, they do have a nice uh, iPad app that you can actually do a demo of this thing if you want to play with it. Um, this is actually in flight right now, a live flight. Uh, there's, it shows traffic on a traffic scope. You can select the traffic, and it'll show speed and end number if it has it. Some of these targets might not. There's one that does. Uh, so you'll be able to see you know, which traffic might be a factor, how fast they're going, which direction they're going. Um, it allows you to turn on and off the speed if you want to. There's different restrictions on traffic. You can have unrestricted altitude, uh, any traffic that's mostly below you, uh, like 9,000 feet below you and 2,700 feet above you, I believe. There's above, which is used for when you're climbing out. I think it's 9,000 above and 2,700 below. And then there's normal, which would be 2,700 up below and above when you're in cruise. So you don't have to look at all the traffic uh, that isn't going to be a factor for you at all. And you can zoom in and zoom out. You can see that there's a lot of traffic, but it's a little bit farther away today. Uh, we got a little weather system going through. So it does have a good traffic scope on it. Off to the side, uh, when you're not on the traffic scope, you can slide over and there's a terrain screen that it has. Um, terrain is an extra feature that I got with this one. You can see that it does show AGL altitude and it shows obstacles. It comes with the database. You don't have to maintain the database if you don't want to. Um, this is the version 3.2 software, their latest and greatest, by the way. But uh, you can get it with terrain alerting or without terrain alerting. I just have it with base terrain. Um, you can also zoom in and zoom out on the terrain screen. They, uh, there is a weather map on it. And right now you can see you can zoom in on this just like anything else. It shows airmets and sigmets. Uh, just like you know, all these lines that are going down here, there's the radar picture. Uh, I kind of like it too because this map you can do either track up or north up. So there's north up, there's track up. So whichever view you like, like I actually like leaving this one in north up when I fly because uh, my other maps I can fly in, in track up. And this gives me a different view so that I can kind of view it more logically like you would for uh, flying around the country. I want to change headings here. Uh, you can click on airports, and it'll show you the airport. You can click information. And as you can see, there's the TAF. I can scroll through and read the TAF. You can also get METARs for the same airports. And NOTAMs, which I find really incredible. I mean, they're all available by ADSB, but now, if you're flying around in the middle of nowhere and you just happen to be going to some pancake breakfast and decide to stop at another airport, you can actually pull up all the notams for it without having to pull out your iPad. So that's a handy little feature. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? So there's things that you can turn on and off. There's a legend if you want to read the legend for the different things that are on the screen. It has winds. Turn that off. Um, 
There's own ship in the middle, so you see where you are. And when you zoom in, you can see the smaller airports as I zoom in. It does have the outlines of states. And the heading again. Uh, and if you slide over another screen, now we have winds and temperatures aloft. So you can see right here it's chosen for wind. Flight level 3,000 feet. There's 9,000. You can see the wind barbs. Uh, let's zoom in. Oops, wrong screen. We'll zoom out so you can see more of the wind barbs. There's the bigger nationwide picture. Uh, you can also get temperatures aloft by hitting the temperature button. So now you can actually have all that information real handy sitting on this screen. And if you go all the way over to the side, you get another one where you can do airport searches. So I can do uh, K-E-A. Let's go down to the U's. And there's Eau Claire. So you can get their METAR. So it, it has a pretty nice interface. Everything on it works really well. And if you hit the traffic button, it goes right back to the transponder field uh, display. So you can uh, have your normal display back in just an instant if you need it. But I just find that uh, if you're buying ADS-B, you may as well get all the features you can. I've had systems that had limitations. The Navworks was limited in that it only received 978 megahertz signals. So I wasn't able to directly air-to-air -air pick up 75% uh, of the traffic, actually, because 75% of the people right now are equipped with the 1090 megahertz. So if you're flying in a mountain valley or down low, like today, uh, I'm only at 1,000 AGL. And you wouldn't see planes unless you could see them directly, because we don't have ADS-B coverage at our airport. Uh, there's a lot of other features and things that, I, that you might want to read about. Uh, I do have a web posting about this that goes along with this video. Um, but with the Navworks not having two frequencies, I knew it was time to get rid of that. They were intending on coming out with it, but then they went out of business. Uh, the Echo, that box actually had dual frequency, so that was a bonus. But the transmitter is real, real low power. And I was getting a lot of ghost shadow targets, uh, so if I was flying around like in this altitude right now, um, I would see myself and it would call, it, well, that's, that's one thing. It, the Echo didn't give me traffic alerting. I had to actually build a box that would give me traffic alerting to attach in line with it. But the problem is I was getting traffic alerts on myself all the time because I believe it's because the uh, ground-based transmitter wasn't able to hear my weak transmitter, the ground-based transceiver, uh, but they were still able to send me up, and the echo was receiving my uh, primary target radar traffic. And so it would show me as, as a traffic target that wasn't me. And there's different codes that it sends up with the target, and I believe that uh, it just wasn't able to determine that that was me flying there. There was a lot of limitations that I had with the Echo, and we were able, able to overcome a lot of them, but you can't do much about a weak transmitter. So I finally just took that out and decided to go all out. This box has a real good, strong transmitter. Um, it's a normal transponder. It was an easy swap, and it allowed me to get rid of the extra hardware in the tail. So installation-wise, I wish I would have done this right up front. It was a lot better way to go. And I noticed one thing for sure, that's that this thing picks up and paints the complete weather radar picture around me a lot faster than any other system I've had so far. So very, very satisfied. It does a real good job with traffic. I uh, love how the radar scope screen works. Uh, it gives you another way to display traffic with no clutter. You notice there's no background map on the traffic scope on this one. Uh, when you're looking at it on your MFD, you're having to see airport names and uh, airspaces and all sorts of different things around on the on the screen at the same time. So it sometimes can make it a little hard when there's a lot of traffic, especially when traffic is laid on top of each other, to pick out who is who. Uh, another benefit with this one, too, is that it's the only system, I believe, if you watch one of their videos, I heard it anyway, that's certified to be able to do uh, audible call-outs for traffic at low altitudes, like traffic pattern altitudes. There's special certifications that it requires. 
And uh, this does have the ATAS option, A-T-A-S, I think it stands for Audible Traffic Alerting System. Uh, it calls out traffic that's a factor, and it uh, calls it out like traffic 3 o'clock, 2 miles high. And so you'll be able to know just in your headset where the traffic is and where to look, even if you're not looking at your screen. Uh, a lot of systems have to disable traffic callouts below a certain altitude because they're not certified, and I think this is the only one that is. Plus, you can upgrade this to act active traffic if you want to have an actual TCAS type traffic system in it with multiple antennas. Um, you can do that. So this is a good system as it is, and it's a system that can grow into an even better system if you decide you want to spend the money. So anyway, just thought I'd give you a quick overview of the transponder, and let's see who this is before we leave. Somebody going 194 knots, and they're behind me. Headed the other way. Not a factor. Anyway, thanks for watching.